Which one sounds better? Or this? Can you spot the main difference between the two? I mean, the notes are really the same, but the second one sounded like it fit the music that was going on behind it. What's the missing ingredient from the first one? Rhythm. We've got to maintain good rhythm chops at all times, even when we're playing a lead. If you're playing a solo, you can't be unaware or willfully ignore what the band is playing. And even if you're not playing with a band, if you're just playing by yourself, you have to have a strong sense of the rhythm of the piece that you're playing, even if you take a little lead break. You don't want to lose it when you're playing a solo. So what was wrong with that first example? Well, specifically, it completely ignored the shuffle feel. It didn't play up to that da, da, da. Da, 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 groove and it sounded out of time the drums and the rhythm guitar are locked into that blues shuffle rhythm that we know and love and it's based on eighth note triplets well what does that mean well eighth notes are counted one and two and three and four and there are eight of them in a measure but we're going to take each pair of eighth notes and swap it with a group of three so we get a triplet in place of each pair of eighth notes. And we would count that one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So the notes are evenly spaced in musical time with eighth notes, and they still are with triplets. It's just that we've got one more subdivision to squeeze in there. Now, the blues shuffle is all about what we do with that middle subdivision. If you're counting one triplet, it's when you would say trip, right? We either rest on that and don't play there, or we don't play, but we hold over from the previous subdivision. So we either get the rest, that sort of punchy stutter that would sound like this, one, let two, let three, let four, let one, let two, let three, let four, let. All right? Or we would hold it out and it would sound like this one, let two, let three, let four, let one, let two, let three, let four, let. A lot of guitarists have a hard time differentiating between a straight eighth note pattern or a triplet based shuffle. And the reason I think is because you still have two times that you're playing per each main beat. Whether it's eighth notes and you play it like this, one and two and three and four and, or a shuffle with that triplet feel and you play it like this, one, let two, let three, let four, let. We still played eight times. The difference is, of course, that we kind of push that second time we play a little bit closer to the main beat, and that's all because we're omitting that middle subdivision of the triplet. And that was one fundamental issue with the first example back at the beginning of the video. The band was playing a shuffle. The rhythm guitar was playing that shuffle, that triplet based rhythm, but yet the lead guitar was playing straight eighth notes. It created a mismatch and it was basically just out of time. It also sounded pretty lifeless because the notes we were playing were being played with a boring rhythm. So how do we fix it? And more importantly, how can you practice leads in such a way that gets you deeper into the groove? Let's take a look at an exercise that will help. First, let's decide on the overall rhythm of the piece. Will we be playing over a blues shuffle or maybe a straight ahead rock and roll rhythm, bossa nova, bossa nova? Let's stick with a shuffle for this example, but know that you can pick pretty much anything. Now, let's choose a simple phrase that we can play at the end of a measure, and this will be our beacon, something that we return to in order to ground our timing. Something like this. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four. Nothing fancy, but we're gonna flesh it out in the exercise. And by the way, play this with a metronome or a backing track. We're trying to expose issues in your timing here, and you really can't do that unless you're practicing with a reliable timekeeper. Oh, and play along with a tempo that you can play comfortably, and don't be afraid to count out loud. Now, what we'll do is play through a few rounds of just this phrase at the end of a measure, like this.
Now, here's where the fun starts. Let's expand this little phrase into the first part of the measure where we just kind of had the beat chucking along earlier, but now we're going to fill it in, but we're going to make sure to keep that ending perfectly in its place. We'll play something like this. All right, so did you nail that? Take a minute and check in with yourself, and if you're struggling, this is the part of the exercise for you to stay in for a while. Slow down, but be aware of your timing and make sure it's locking in with the beat. Now, if you've got that, let's flesh this out a bit more by varying the note values, and we'll introduce some 16th notes. You may find some breakdowns in a measure like this because of the speed of those 16th notes. They can really get you kind of worked up, but try to stay relaxed as you play and have a go at it. If you did struggle, then slow things down and really focus on letting the notes fall in time and sticking that landing, coming back to that familiar ending that we've established in the exercise. Let's turn up the heat a little bit by expanding this by bar. We'll play right through bar one, ignoring our familiar ending, and we'll delay that until the end of bar two. So we've got much more space to fill here, but do make sure that you end with that final familiar phrase. Here's what I came up with. That's what I came up with for me, and your mileage may vary, but it's more important to me that you learn how to practice in time and groove rather than learning this particular lick. So feel free to inject your own phrases, but keep them tied to the beat, keep them tied to the groove, and keep coming back to that familiar ending. If you currently struggle with this, use this exercise to help your leads fall in the groove. And if you got something out of this, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Good luck with this. And if you want to keep learning, click or tap right over here and I'll see you in that video. Until then, practice smart and play on.